Welcome back to CTV News Channel. I'm Jennifer Burke. The number of restricted firearms registered across Canada is at its highest point in more than a decade. That's according to the latest report of Canada's Commissioner of Firearms. The number of restricted guns in Canada has increased 9.5% last year. Joining me now on the line from Green Lake, British Columbia, is Rod Giltaka. He's president of the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights. First of all, love Green Lake. You're super lucky to be there for the long weekend, Rod. Thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. Can you explain the uptick and is 9.5% concerning? Uh, I don't think anybody should be concerned, actually. Um, and this is the reason, since the birth of modern gun control, so that was somewhere around the, the early 90s, um, the proponents of gun control really wanted three things uh, out of that whole process. Uh, they wanted firearm owners to be licensed, they wanted firearms to be registered, and they also wanted extra paperwork for, you know, let's say a, a permit to transport your firearm to and from an approved shooting range. And the firearms in question that we're talking about today actually meet those requirements because they're restricted. So you'd think that a lot of people would be happy that that number's gone up. Hmm, I guess then I want to come at it from a different perspective. Why would more people want to uh, own a restricted weapon at this time? Is there something that might have compelled them to buy more violence, say, down south, more concern that the government's going to be taking our guns? I mean, is it, can you see how, where I'm going with that? Yeah, I think that um, I think the situation in the United States and Canada are very different situations. Uh, we tend to always look at the United States and their situation as the worst case scenario, but in Canada, uh, my opinion is that uh, I think Canadians are more informed about uh, legal firearm ownership and its, and of course, its lack of relationship with criminal shootings. And also, I've seen personally as an instructor uh, a large increase in interest to uh, in a lot of shooting sports, like three gun competitions, and that's a competition specifically that uses two out of the three of those uh, firearms are restricted firearms, so mm. that could account for quite a bit of it. In your opinion, then, does Canada have better laws in terms of the, the, the safety, the storage, the transport of semi-automatics than there are in the U.S.? That's a, that's a really difficult question, again, because the situation in, in the United States is completely different. Mm -hmm. In the United States, there's an inherent right to own and use firearms, and in Canada, the government of Canada doesn't recognize uh, a right to own firearms, so we do have a lot more bureaucracy. There have been uh, peer-reviewed studies in Canada that have shown um, no relationship between our firearms uh, control regime and public safety, actually. Okay, so I was listening to a gun control advocate today talking about this particular story, and in essence, you know, she was saying it, it takes just one gun. Uh, to wreak havoc, as we saw recently in Florida at the nightclub. So how are Canadians uh, inured against that kind of violence that we've seen south of the border, where you can buy a semi-automatic weapon like an AR-15 in a big box store? Is it because Canadians can't do that, that we're not seeing as many violent incidents like that, mass shootings like that? Well, I'd, I'd have to respond to that by saying that, you know, we, we call it gun violence a lot. It's really violent behavior. And we don't have, there's a, lot, there's a lot of aspects of criminal behavior that we don't have. Uh, we can't compare per capita to the United States. Um, certainly if someone wanted to use a gun or to get a gun illegally in Canada, it's probably a lot easier than to get one legally. So, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the firearms advocacy community, we, we pour over tons of data to actually answer those questions ourselves because we're concerned about public safety too. And we can't really find a link Interesting. I wish we had more time, Rod, but we're out of it. I appreciate yours, though. Thanks for coming on today. Anytime. Rod Giltaka is president of the Canadian Coalition for Firearms.